this week's piano practice. We are going to get right into it, getting started with our C major scales, slow and then fast, and then our skip exercise, C, E, G, F, D, C, slow, and then fast, double time, meaning twice as fast as we went in the first place. Okay, here we go. This is going to be our tempo. One, two, here we go. C major. more, just a smidge faster, really trying to push all the work that we've been doing on these lessons and during our weekly practice. Here we go. One, two, three, four. with the C major scale. Let's talk about the G major scale. We talked a little bit about this in our previous lessons and if you've taken my classes at JCAL before. Now as we move up the scale what happens is that we have to take the patterns of the major scale to our next starting point. So if C is our starting point for C major, G is going to be our starting point for G major. And we have the pattern to make the C major scale whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So let's explore what that looks like. From G to our next note, A, that's our whole step. We need another whole step, which is to B. Remember, a whole step means that there's another note in between. The half step is one, the one note to the next note, and a whole step is with one half step in between. So we start on G, we have a whole step, whole step. Now we have a half step. There's no black key in the half step. It doesn't always have to be a black key, but it's the exact note. There's nothing in between. So we have our half step. Then we continue with whole steps. Whole, whole, whole. But as you see, the next white key is a half step. So we have to make that adjustment. To make from E to the next note a whole step, we have to go from the half step, which would be F, to the next half step, which is F sharp. So we go from E to F sharp and to G. In our major scales, there's only eight keys. So when we, instead of F, we replace it with F sharp. We do not play both keys. F has been replaced with F sharp. So let's give that a try on our right hand. It's the same fingering as C major. So let's give it a try. Here we go. One, two, nice and slow. Here we go. We have G, A, B. Under with your right thumb on C, D, E. Stretch your fourth finger to the black key F sharp and pinky on G. Let's try going back down now. We have G, F sharp, third finger on E, not F, D. Walk it down to the thumb on C, over with the third finger and walking it down. A lot of people like to memorize that G has one black key, which is F sharp, and the rest are white. The one white key that it skips over is F. So let's just try that one more time a little bit faster, then we'll go onto the left hand and then both hands together. Here we go. We have a G, a A, a B, under C, and a D, and a E, stretch to F sharp, and a G. Back down, we have G, then F sharp, then an E, and a D, down to C, over to B, and A, and C. Good. Let's get started with the left hand. Again, our new starting point is 
G, not C, like in the C major scale, so our pinky is now on the G. And I do the G below middle C to start with our G major scales. Now we're gonna walk up on the white keys to our thumb over with the third finger, reach the second to F sharp instead of F, and up to G. Let's give that a try. Here we go, one and a two, and a here we go. We have a G and a A and a B and a C, up to D, over three. Good, stretch to F sharp and G, back down. Third on E, under, and walk it down. Let's give that a try one more time, just a smidge faster. Just a smidge, here we go. One, two, left hand, here we go. We have a G and a A and a B, C, D, up a E, F sharp, and G, back down. Down to E, under. Let's try both hands now together, the G major scale. I'm starting with my thumb, five notes above C, mid, middle C with the thumb on the right hand, and one, two, three, four notes below middle C in the left hand, an octave apart. Here we go, one, two. Here we go, we have walk it up, under in the right, over in the left. Reach to F sharp and back down. Reach that E under in the left, over in the right. Here we go. Now that we've reviewed G major along with C major, let's talk about C minor and then transfer it into C and to G minor. Now we have, for C minor, we take the third note down a half step and that changes the pattern of holes and half steps. Instead of whole step to D and a whole step to E and then a half step to F, we now have a whole step to D, a half step to E flat and a whole step skipping over E to F, right? We have under. And in the left hand, E flat. Let's give that a try both hands together at a nice easy tempo. Get the third fingers already ready on the E flat so you don't play E and you're in your, um, Second finger in the left hand ready to play the F. Your thumb's gonna go under to F in the right. Here we go. One, two, nice and slow. Both hands. We have C, D, E flat, under, over and left, and C back down. Under in the left, over in the right. see what that looks like for G minor, okay? We're going to go up to our starting note G, and we're going to do that same pattern of whole, half, whole at the beginning. So we start with G, we go a whole step to A, then we go a half step to B flat, a whole step to C, whole step to D, whole step to E, whole step to F sharp, and finally to the half step to G. Yeah, so in our right hand, that looks like this. Thumb, second, 
third, under with the thumb, just like it's a C major. Reach to the black key F sharp, back down. Over with the third to be flat. We have two black keys now, B flat and F sharp. In the left hand, it looks like this. Our third finger again is on that B flat, ready to play, and our second finger on C. week to practice those hands separately with your metronome getting them nice and steady upping the tempo and when you're ready you can come back to this video we're gonna do it with both hands G minor okay and a nice slow tempo for you to do when you're ready once you practice some of you may be ready now because you've done a lot of hard work or this minor maybe you've had experience doing minor skills before so if you're ready here we go if not come back to it when you are both hands together third fingers on B flat here we go one Two, here we go, and we have a G, A, B flat, under in the right, oh, keep going, over in the left, F sharp, back down, under in the left, over in the right. Last week, we started an exercise that um, dealt with chords. Chords meaning any two notes from a scale that are played together. For instance, C and E, E and G. And we worked on an exercise that first split up the, the notes from C to E to G and back down and played them together. This separated part is called an arpeggio, separated notes from a chord, and we play them together, that's C major chord. I'm counting it, one, two, three, two, one. Now, now, we can do the same thing with minor. Instead of the third finger on E, we can put the third finger on E flat. Separate. G major and G minor this week as well, let's do that same exercise but in G. Now we use the first of the notes, G, the third, B, and the fifth, D, in our arpeggiated chords. We don't have to worry about the F sharp because we're not playing up there, we're only playing the one, the three, and the five. Then we go to minor, we shift the third finger down a half step again. exercise with the right hand. We're going to go one, two, three, four, one, and two together, then minor. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and together, back to major. One, and two, three, four, one, and two, together, and minor. Last one. Pinky on G to start. We go pinky, 
middle, thumb, middle, pinky, and hold together. Then minor, shift that third finger down to E flat. struggling or you want some extra practice with that, feel free to pause the video and just practice those with the hands separate at that tempo. Eventually the tempo will get faster and you'll feel more confident to put them hands together. If you're feeling ready for hands together, let's give it a try. We're going to do it four times. Once major, then minor, then major, then minor. A little bit faster, both hands. Here we go. One and two and here we go. We have a one, two and three. together and minor. Together, major. And together and minor. Now, before we move on to the rest of our m music listening section of jazz, continuing on today, let's play through Mary Had a Little Lamb. Uh, we'll pick up the tempo a little bit, and remember, we can add chords that we've learned, the C major chords in it. For instance, if we have, at the beginning, we can add the chord in the left hand. definitely the song and we hear it filling out with those chords. We're missing some more of these types of chords in between. And now that we know G major, we can add it almost at the very end. Now if we move our left hand down to the G chord and back to C, we can use the G chord. Now it happens at the very end of the song. We have, and the second time we sing Mary Has a Little Lamb. Mary has a little lamb whose G chord fleece was white as snow. Now the reason that that works is because G is the dominant or the fifth note in a C major chord and they sound really good together. It's a very, very common chord combination, C and G. You hear it in almost every song ever. We call that the one, C our first note, the five, starting with G, a G major chord, and then back to our one. Okay? So if you want to play with that this week, you can. You can put C chords in the melody. Then on fleece, we go down to G. And the ending note back to C. You can even play it in both hands if you want. Awesome. Now I'm going to give an accompaniment so we can have a little bit more fun with this song as we play, okay? So do your best. Adding chords in the left hand or just sticking with the melody in the right. It's up to you where you are in your piano practice. Here we go. I'm going to give you an intro and I'll count you in.
by the 1920s and 30s, jazz music had taken over. It was the beginning of what's called the swing era. The music was so lively and energetic that, and fast that people couldn't help but dance. Swing dancing in the form of the Lindy Hop became a trend among young jazz fans. Dance clubs popped up all over the city, like New York and Chicago. Big Bang leaders such as Duke Ellington, Benny Goodman, Count Basie, Glenn Miller, Tommy Dorsey, and Artie Shaw became household names as jazz records broke record sales numbers. Even though at first jazz wasn't popular among the older generations, most people eventually fell in love with the music. These band leaders and other composers wrote songs, hit after hit. When audiences went to hear music and dance, they wanted to hear their favorite songs. This became a big part of jazz. Now any artist could play any song in any way that they wanted to. These changes in songs are called arrangements. They would change the song in order for the song to work better for their orchestra and their soloists. We are going to take a look at a song and listen to two different arrangements in just a bit. We'll hear the kind of differences and changes these artists began to make to each other's music. Honeysuckle Rose, being played by Benny Goodman and his orchestra. Benny Goodman was born in Chicago in 1909 to parents who were Russian immigrants. By the time he was a teenager, he was playing clarinet professionally. Everyone knew he would be a star. He became known as the King of Swing and made a successful career for himself as a band leader by his early 20s. Listen to his band's version of Honeysuckle Rose now before we listen to another arrangement of this song. Thank you. 
Errol Garner was born in Pittsburgh in 1921. He came from a family of musicians and taught himself piano at three, playing professionally by seven. He is known for his virtuosic style of playing which refers to his quick and impressive playing on the piano. He can play at speeds so fast that most people would lose control. Now that you know a little bit about him, let's listen to his version of Honeysuckle Rose. His instrument is piano instead of the clarinet in the previous recording. His band is also smaller than Benny Goodman's was and came a decade or so later. Let's take a listen. was born in 1905 in Baltimore, Maryland. He is one of the most accomplished drummers of all time. He was born with spinal tuberculosis and because of its crippling defects, he was very small even as an adult. That did not stop him. In the mid-1920s, he had started his own band and moved to New York City. He had to sit on a platform and had a custom drum set made for his size. He became a New York City staple, playing at the most popular dance hall in the city, the Savoy Ballroom in Harlem. While Benny Goodman was considered the king of swing, Chick Webb actually beat Benny Goodman in a 1937 playoff, a swing competition. He didn't have a singular soloist in his band, unlike the Benny Goodman Orchestra and like Louis Armstrong, but people awaited his drum solos night after night until his death in 1939. 